DSLR editing in Premiere Pro CC is easier and more efficient than ever before. And in the past, whereas I used to use Premiere Pro solely as the application to work with my DSLR footage, well, in CS6, we introduced Adobe Prelude. Adobe Prelude was introduced to be an ingesting, logging, metadata tagging, and rough cutting tool where you could basically make your selects, um, make sub clips, rough cut, and then actually send it over to Premiere to begin your editing process. Now, if you're new to DSLR editing, if you're new to editing in general, a lot of these terms may sound unfamiliar. And similarly, it may not really enlighten you to want to have to use another application really to do your DSLR workflow. However, if you think of Prelude as kind of the Lightroom for video, where just like in Lightroom, you make your selections, right? You add metadata, you transfer, or you transcode, or you convert your files to something standard like from NEF or CR2 to DNG. Well, that process is known as transcoding in video. That's what you can do in Prelude. And it just allows you to really make your selections and thin out the media that you don't need to just kind of speed up the editing process or the pre-editing process so that when you finally get to do your finished edits, it just goes that much more quickly and it's that much more efficient. And this is actually the way I do it now. So <clears throat> whereas before, simply we just didn't have Prelude, everything was done natively in Premiere. This is my preferred way and you'll see that ultimately this is going to save you time in the end. So when you launch Adobe Prelude CC, this is the first thing that you'll see, minus the footage that I already have in my project panel here. But along the top, you'll see that we have four basic modes. We have ingest, logging, list, and rough cut. And in this case, I want you to click on ingest, and that's going to bring you into the ingest dialog, which I have here. Now again, ingest is effectively importing your footage, whether it's coming off of a media card. And what you'll actually see here is that I have a CF card from my Nikon D800 connected via a USB 2 card reader going into my Retina machine here. And I'm literally going to be reviewing the content right off of that card. And you can see that just like in the media browser in Premiere Pro, I can see all the drives and things that I have connected to my system. So here we are inside the ingest dialog. And again, just like in Premiere Pro CC, if I take my mouse and simply hover over these clips, I can begin to see what's in or what's happening in each one of those clips. And again, the benefit here is that I can very quickly review the footage that I actually don't need, right? Today, because our media cards are getting less and less expensive, it's just easier for us and more common for us to shoot more footage than we need. And in the case of working on a safari here, I have a lot of shots of animals, and in this case, a lioness, sitting in a field doing nothing over and over again. So why would I want 10 clips of the lioness as beautiful as she was sitting in a field doing this? I wouldn't. So that's why Prelude is so genius. And again, this is going to allow me to really ultimately save time in the end when I finish telling my story. Now, one of the other things that you can do, of course, is you, you can size up these thumbnails. I really don't like looking at them that small. And again, now I'm literally thumbing through or clicking through all the various clips that I have. And here's the first one that I actually wanted to take a look at, this one here. So again, hover scrubbing, coming right off of our CF card. If I actually click on the clip, now we have this little playhead. Again, just like in Premiere Pro's media browser, I can JKL, use my JKL keys to play this back okay. and review it. And this is a, just a really nice short clip, a pan from left to right of this Impala in the bush. Perfect. This is what I want. Select it. Good. Now we have a clip that I want. Now, as I scroll down here, we've got this clip of some rhinos. And you'll notice, by the way, how the UI kind of goes gray, just like in Lightroom. And when you hover over it, the light box is turned on. So this is, again, a really nice feature. And the more that you're familiar with Lightroom, you're going to find, wow, this is, this is actually quite similar. So again, now I'm looking at this clip here. And we can see that it starts out with me kind of going all over the place, trying to find where the animal is as I'm looking through my viewfinder. And then I finally get to the animal somewhere around there. So this now brings up another point. This is a pretty long clip. And the first 20 or 30 seconds is me trying to, f I'm on a Jeep, of course, that's moving. So where, where is the creature? And I have to pull focus. And it's, he's moving, and I'm moving. So the first 30 seconds, I don't need it. So why would I want to ingest or import that? Just like with bad photos, blurry photos, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. And similarly, towards the end of the clip, it's just a lot of shots of the backside of the rhino, which again, not what I'm looking for to tell my story. So why ingest media that you don't need? So this is what we refer to in Prelude, in Prelude as a partial 
ingest. This is an amazingly cool feature, and again, not only does it save you time when you're actually editing, but ultimately it's going to save disk space. Let's not forget, we're dealing with 1080p. These files are not small. And as we move forward in video, whether you're shooting 1080p on your DSLR or you move into 4K or 5K, file sizes get bigger and bigger. Why ingest media that you simply will not use? Well, you don't have to. So you can perform a partial ingest. So once again, I can click inside my clip, I can scrub it here, and what you can see is that I've already added in and out points simply by using I and O on my keyboard, just as we did in the previous episode in Premiere Pro. Now when I do that, again, I'm going to select this clip, now I have the option to either transfer or transcode my media. Now if I'm simply taking the entire clip as it existed on the card or from a drive, I would simply transfer the clips to a destination. Now this is the recommended workflow. You don't want to work with the media coming off of the card. You can, and I showed you this in Premiere, but ultimately, again, this is why I love Prelude, you want to transfer that media from the card that it was shot on to some other drive, preferably something like an SSD, just for better performance. But in the case of a partial ingest, you actually have to perform a transcode. And again, if you're coming from a photographic background, this is the same as converting those raw NEF or CR2 files to a standard like DNG. Well, in video, when we transcode, and I can turn on my transcode uh, radio button here, we can choose something like a standard. And one of the nice things is in Prelude CC, we now have support for Avid DNX HD, MXF OP1A built right into the application. This is a standard. So again, if you've never heard this term before, ah, ah, well, you can use that. Okay, that's a great one to choose, and that'll be on both your Mac and PC. Now, if you're on the Mac side, we also allow you to encode to ProRes. So again, you could choose um, QuickTime here, and if we built some presets, which I'm going to show you in another episode, you could choose a ProRes option to transcode your media into. You'll also see all the other various options that you have available to you here. DPX, which is a standard image sequence format, very high quality. P2 movies, again, variations in QuickTime where you can build your presets in Media Encoder. I'm actually going to choose DNX HD. This is an industry standard. Your media is going to look great. It plays beautifully in Premiere Pro. And then you have, again, all of these presets and various options that you can choose. So I'm actually going to choose this one down here. Our, now, I don't need this to be RGB444, but I think I just will anyway. So 1080p, 23976, there we go. If you have a series of clips that you actually want to stitch together, this used to be called concatenate. Now it simply says stitch your clips together. We're not doing that here. And again, you can choose where they go and you can add a subfolder and give that a name or some kind of naming convention if you so desire. So again, partial ingest requires transcoding. Because I have transcoded checked here though, it's going to transcode everything that I have selected here, not just the partially ingested uh, clip here. Now, just like in Lightroom, we talked about adding metadata or custom metadata fields, where you can do this in Prelude CC as well. So if I turn on Add File Metadata with this little radio button right here, we can see we've got Add File Metadata checked. I can choose to apply it to all destinations or just our primary destination. And then I can choose to actually create a preset. Now what you can see here is that I've actually created one that has things like the camera type, the location, and the lens used. So it's automatically going to create these three custom metadata fields, which I'll be able to search on. And this is using the standard XMP metadata schema that you have throughout the creative applications. And it's automatically going to stamp all these clips with this metadata. Now if I wanted to make one similarly for something else, I could choose create a new preset. We can go ahead and add something here. So for our metadata key, perhaps this will be animal. And then for the value, this will, will have something like rhino. And then we can create another one, and it can be, um, let's say, setting. And this can be daytime for our setting. Okay, these are all shot in the daytime. Spell it correctly. Go ahead and save that. And we'll call this ZA for South Africa. Uh, you know, uh, rhinos, and that'll be our preset for the rhinos. And again, you could, you get the idea how you can add these. If I wanted to go back to my D800, my camera metadata, and these are just creating the idea of creating custom metadata tags or fields. Now, similarly, another thing that you do in Lightroom, which you can also do here, which is very useful in a DSLR video workflow, is your file renaming. Because again, do you necessarily want a hundred files that just have you know, 001 underscore something else dot MOV? Well, maybe, but maybe not. 
So once again, we have the ability here to create a new preset, and you'll see that you have several options where you can auto increment, add custom text, date, or a file name. So if we had custom text, this could be ZA shoot, and it's actually showing you what the sample will be, and we can do an underscore here, and maybe then we add the date, and then you can see how you want the date being formatted, the ingest date, or on the creation date, and then how you want that displayed, so year, month, day, maybe like this, a two-digit year, that looks good, and it's showing you right there how it's going to appear. Go ahead, save the preset, ZA Safari, click OK, and now I can actually ingest the footage, and more importantly, ingest the pieces of the footage with partial ingest, only those pieces that I need. So when I click on ingest, what actually happens is now, this is actually working in the background in the Adobe Media Encoder. So the cool thing about this is, if you have another card or something else, or you wanna ingest another section from one of those videos, this can be ingesting in the background. All you have to do is go into ingest, and again, choose another card or similar media from the card and keep on working. It doesn't care because it's all happening in the background. And if you look down below, you can actually see that it's ingesting. So this is again, really wonderful. Oh, and look, it just came in. Now we can see our clip right here, 10 seconds. It just happens in the background. That's the benefit of Prelude CC and all these applications being 64-bit. Genius. Okay, so once again, let's talk a little bit about things like subclipping and then actually sending this media to Premiere Pro. So very quickly, I'm going to double click on this clip here of the elephant. And there, all of our transcoding is done. Okay, very good. Now, as I scrub through this here, I can see that, mm, I don't know if I want the backside of the elephant here, so we just sort of want it as he appears uh, from the bush. So now I'm going to use subclip markers. So I'm simply going to click on my subclip. You can also use shortcut key one here and I can give it a name, Elephant Emerges, and I can give it a description if I want. Let's go up to our marker inspector here so we can actually see that. One of the other nice things that I like to do is you'll see that we have this scrubbable timecode text. So if I simply wanted it to end a bit earlier, I can click and drag this, and you'll see that it's actually moving the playhead, and right before it gets real shaky, release, and there we go. I've got my subclip. I save that, because you'll notice here next to .mov, again, this was the pre-transcoded footage that I'd already had in the project, this is telling me that the clip is dirty. I can go ahead and save that, and now it creates a subclip for me indicated by this little icon right here. If we go to uh, another piece of footage, like this one, our Impala. Now this one, I want the entire clip to be used, but I'm still going to create a subclip. So I'm gonna create a subclip here. You can see it has the name, that particular name that we gave it right there. Now for this one, I'm also going to add a comment marker. So I'm going to add a comment marker, and under the description, I'm going to say Impala grazing in bush, okay? Like that. Now take note of that, because what's significant here is that I'm actually able to take these markers, let's go ahead and save this as well, and I can start building my rough cut, and if we've got comment markers, you're actually going to be able to see those in the Premiere Pro timeline. So let's maybe do one more quick subclip so we can start to build out a little rough cut for you here. Once again, I'm going to scrub through on this footage. We've got a nice little sort of zoom in on our elephant. So while this is playing, I'm going to use our JKL keys. I'm going to hit shortcut key one, give it a name, elephant eating. Hold down my alt key and hit O to close it. One again, alt, O. Now we've got two subclips. And again, if I don't like the actual positions of those, I can simply click and drag this around. It's just kind of nice, kind of zooming out like that, and I can just click the edge and adjust the timing there, save it, and now we've got two more subclips. So once you've done that, now we're actually ready to begin building our rough cut. Now again, this may seem like a longer process, but we're really cleaning up and optimizing all of our clips and all of our media before we get to the actual sort of finishing and editing process. So to build your rough cut, I'm going to go to File, Create Rough Cut, or we also have Create a New Rough Cut here. So I'm going to choose Create a New Rough Cut. I'll call this Safari Take, take 1, not Take 21. Place it on the desktop. Double-click 
to open up a blank rough cut timeline. And now I can simply click and drag my media down into my rough cut timeline. So maybe we'll have this sub clip of the elephant here. And maybe we'll have this sub clip of the Impala actually come before that. And actually we want the elephant emerges sub clip first. So three little sub clips. I can go ahead and play this back and you can see, so it starts with our elephant. Shot's a little long, that's okay. Segways to the Impala. You can hear some kind of... I actually have a song on iTunes called Sabi Sabi. All right, you get the idea. I'm just kind of, you know, I, this is the way I think when I'm cutting these things. What kind of music is going to accompany this? Sabi Sabi, available on iTunes right now. So now that I've got this, I'm going to go ahead and save this rough cut because now I'm going to show you the most amazing thing about Prelude is that once you've built your rough cut, I can actually directly from Premiere Pro right click and I can, I mean, <laughs> from Prelude, I can right click on the rough cut and say, send to Premiere Pro. And when I do that, <laughs> all the media and our sequence appears there instantly. Double click and add the sequence. So you can see that we have our sequence here. Again, I can play this back. I can also leverage our cinema mode. So let's just go full screen. Let's see if we can handle this. Um, now again, full screen used to be the tilde key. Uh, in CS6, we introduced the cinema mode. So if I hold control and tilde now, we get this full screen unobscured view. And again, now we're playing full quality of my content. Okay. Looks awesome. Maybe some opportunities to use some warp stabilization there. Let's go ahead and mute that. We don't need to hear that anymore. Again, segues back. Control to get out of there. Very nice. And you even have the ability, if I click back to Prelude, to send individual clips there as well. So like we never got to this clip here, I can simply right click and send that clip as it is directly to Premiere Pro, and there it is. And now I can do additional insertion of this clip or cut it or add ins and outs or do whatever I like from Prelude in Premiere Pro. The key here is that with Prelude CC, just like in Lightroom, which is also part of your Creative Cloud membership, you can take all of your media, you can quickly review it, you can make your selects, you can do partial ingest, you can add file metadata, you can add custom naming, you can build your rough cut, you can sift through all the media that you don't need, and then send that rough cut to Premiere Pro to really begin your editing finesse.